In order to plot the capital allocation line in the efficient frontier in Excel, we're first going to need historical prices. In this example, I'm using a two asset portfolio. The first asset being an S&P 500 index, SPY, and the second asset being a ETF that represents at assets outside of the United States, which is VXUS. Now, in order to get these historical prices, I went to Yahoo Finance. So here I am on the SPY page. Then I went to historical data, grabbed the time period of the previous year. I use daily return frequency, and then I press download. All right, and then I also use the closing price for all of these. So here we have all of our prices, but we need to get daily returns. We don't need the prices, we need daily returns. So to get the daily return of each day, you take the that day divided by the previous day and you subtract one. So that gives us the return for the day. And then we can do this for both assets for every single um, day of the year. We wanna go second from the bottom and paste all of these formulas. Now we have the return for each day for the whole year. Next, we wanna find the average return for each day, okay? So we're gonna take av equals average. Then we're gonna grab the array for SPY and drag it over to VXUS. Now we wanna find the standard deviation, which is our measure of risk, okay? So we're gonna use equal standard dev P, grab the whole array for S&P 500, and then we're also going to drag the formula over to VXUS. Next we're gonna do, we wanna find the covariance, right? So this is a measure of how much do these two assets move together. When SBY goes up, how much is of that variation in VXUS is explained by SPY? So how much do these two move together? We do equals variance P and we grab both arrays separated by a comma. So there's our covariance. Now we need the risk-free rate. Usually people use 2% to represent the risk-free rate, which would be the uh, treasury notes. And But since we're using daily returns, we need to divide 2% by the number of days in the year, which is 252. So that gives us our risk-free rate. Now what we're gonna do here is build out a bunch of different portfolios with different weights in each of the two assets, okay? So we're gonna start with a negative 30% in VXUS. So that means we're actually short 30% VXUS. And then whatever we're not, not invested in VXUS, we actually have uh, an SPY. So we do one minus that amount. So this means we're actually um, long more than 100% in SPY. This is a lot of what is done with this model and how, how it's used in the uh, investment industry. Okay, so now we wanna find the return of each of these portfolios, which is just the weight of each one multiplied by uh, its, its expected return. We wanna make sure that we lock in the cell. Okay, so we took the weight of SPY and we multiplied it by its average return and we locked that cell. Now we're gonna do the same for VXUS. Again, locking the cell, I'm using F4 to do that. Excuse me, the return of each of these portfolios, right? So each row represents a different portfolio. Now we're gonna grab standard deviation. Here you can see on the screen uh, the standard deviation formula, which is a bit compl complicated, but just uh, follow along with me. So we take weight squared of VXUS or SPY and then we multiply it by the actual standard deviation squared because that gives us the variance. Now we do the same thing for VXUS. So weight squared multiplied by variance squared. And now at the last part we do two multiplied by both of the weights. multiplied by the covariance. Okay, so that actually gives us variance, but in order to get standard deviation, we need to take this whole value and take the square root. So there we go. This gives us actually the, the squ square root of that, which is now standard deviation. So we have the standard deviation of each portfolio. Oh, actually, whoops, I need to lock in all the cells in column I and column J. So I'll do that using F4. So now this should give us the standard deviation 
of every single um, portfolio, right? And now we're going to take the sharp ratio. So the sharp ratio tells us what is the return that we're getting for the amount of risk we're taking on each portfolio. We actually prefer the portfolio with the highest sharp ratio. And the sharp ratio is the expected return of the portfolio minus the risk free rate divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so that gives us a sharp ratio for each of these portfolios. We prefer the portfolio with the highest sharp ratio, which you can see at the bottom is actually the one with a 14.03% sharp ratio. So this is actually our optimal portfolio. Right, so now let's let's plot this portfolio. So in order to do this, I used an XY scatter plot. So you can come up to insert and go over here and hit the XY scatter plot there. So I'm going to add the data that we need for that, right? So the X value is always going to be the standard deviation. And the Y value is always going to be the returns. So this gives us the efficient frontier. The efficient frontier plots all of the portfolio combinations. And so we only care about the top half, right? So like for this dot, for example, we can get a higher return for less risk up here. So we do not care about the bottom uh, of this efficient frontier. But what we want to find is the optimal portfolio, which is the one that maximizes sharp ratio. And it's also the one that is tangential to the risk free rate on the y axis. So to plot this, we need to plot the capital asset allocation line. So here we're going to do that. So you can think of the capital asset allocation line as a as an investment in either the risk free rate or the optimal portfolio. And then so if we have 0% invested in the optimal portfolio, we have 100% invested in the risk free rate. So let's find the return here, which is the weight of of our optimal portfolio times the return of our optimal portfolio plus the weight of our risk free asset, which is just one minus this weight, multiplied by the risk free rate. Then we drag this down. So we find the optimal portfolio here. And we also find what happens if we go short 100% of the risk free rate and invest all that amount that we're borrowing into getting double our investment on the optimal portfolio. Now let's find the standard deviation, which is just the weight in the risk free, or the weight of the por optimal portfolio multiplied by the standard deviation of the optimal portfolio. So here we go. We actually have zero standard deviation or zero risk at all if we are fully invested in the risk free rate according to this model. Now let's plot this. So we're going to do add standard deviation is always the x value, and here we go return. So now we're seeing this capital asset allocation line um, hit tangentially with the efficient frontier and we see where it interacts. This dot is actually the portfolio with a 0.13% return and the 0.92% standard deviation. So that is our optimal portfolio uh, mapped with the efficient frontier. Okay, so thank you for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. Thank you.